In the last section, we put together a new component for showing a card. The card's purpose is just to look nice and wrap some other existing component as well. So it's gonna be enhancing our view or enhancing the style of our application in some fashion. With React.js applications, if you have any background with that, it's kind of rare to make a component that just adds some amount of styling. But in React Native, because we want to have some reuse of style throughout our code base, and we don't have the benefit of separate CSS files, it's a little bit more common to make standalone components whose sole purpose is to add some styling into the application. Okay, so let's add in some, some, uh, let's add in some styling here, there we go. Remember our goal for adding styling or the approach that we use? Underneath the component, we add a new object called styles. That will be an object, and then we'll give it a single property. And in this case, I'm gonna call it container style. Now I'm gonna call this specifically container style because it's gonna be some styling that we're adding to this view tag right here. And the whole purpose of this view tag is to just wrap some other component. And so you can kind of think of it as being like a container. And so that's where I'm coming from with this word container style right here. One thing I wanna throw out there, the names of all the style properties that we use throughout the course, completely arbitrary. I'm just kind of picking them, not necessarily at random, you know, I'm putting some thought into it, but you can change it from container style to anything else you might wanna have. So totally up to you. Now I want to make apologize, or I want to apologize right now because we're going to add a lot of styles to this container style right here, a lot of typing. So let's just get to it. Uh, we'll just power through all the styling. Once we're done with it, I think we'll both be really happy to be done. So let's get started. First off, we're going to give this card a border. So we'll assign a border width of one. This says put a border around the component and give it a pixel width of one. So a nice thin border around the outside. Next, we'll give it a border radius of two. A border radius says at any corners of my component, round them off nicely. So give it just kind of rounded edges, rounded corners, excuse me. Next, a border color of DDD. So this border color right here is gonna give us a nice light gray border along the outside. And finally, for the border, we'll give it a border bottom width of zero. So we assigned a border width of, of one up above, but for the bottom of the border, the bottom segment, we're saying don't give it any width, just hide the border entirely. So the reason for this is related to the card section or card item component that we're gonna work on later. So there is a reason that we're kind of zeroing out the border there. We'll discuss it once we get to the card item. So that's it for borders. Next, we'll give this thing a shadow. The purpose of the shadow is just to give this thing a little bit of pop or a little bit of elevation appearance to it, right? It just makes it feel like the card is something you could kind of pick up and drag off the screen. So we'll start off with a shadow color of 000, a shadow offset with a width of zero and a height of two. Remember that the shadow offset specifies what side we want the shadow to be on. So I don't want any shadow on the left and right side, but I do want a height to the shadow. So it's gonna to appear to have some shadowing to the bottom. Next, we'll give a shadow opacity of 0 0.1. If you recall, the shadow opacity is what is used to kind of give uh, darkness or kind of light. Opacity is really about making a component or an item see-through, so to speak. Um, by applying opacity to a very dark color, it kind of lightens it up a little bit. We can go anywhere from zero to one with the opacity. Giving a 0.1 gives it just kind of very nice light gray color to it. Next for the shadow radius, we'll give a two. So two pixels for the radius. A shadow radius right here is just like the border radius. So at the corners of the shadow, it'll round them off nicely. And this is really important because it's gonna map up nicely with the border radius as well. If we had a border radius of two, but then the shadow was like, you know, had square edges or square corners, it would just look really goofy. And so that's why we're assigning a shadow radius here as well. Next is the elevation. We'll talk about why we have elevation later on. And then we'll give some margin. So a margin left of five, a margin right of five, and a margin top, oops, of 10. These margin settings right here behave the exact same way as they do with normal CSS. They're used to just place some spacing in between components. 
So a margin left and a margin right says, hey, give me some spacing against the left and right hand sides of the device in the actual screen. And then the margin top is related to when we show a card in the list. So if we have some list of cards, we wanna make sure that there's some reasonable spacing in between each one so they don't just kind of all stack right on top of each other. And so that's why we give it a margin top of 10. Cool, so last step now, we're going to apply this container style to our view tag. So on the view tag, I will say style. Make sure you do not say styles. It's not plural, it's singular here. And then into there, we'll pass styles.containerStyle. And I'll new line the view tag as well. Of course, we still have the ESLint error here. It says components should be closing if they don't have any contents. We actually are gonna add some contents in here very shortly in the next section. So let's take a quick break and talk about exactly how we are going to use a card component, like you know this one right here, to wrap some other component. So let's take a quick, quick break and take care of that in the next section.